just unscrew that. And it comes away. And there's the rebate all the way up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one cut that you can do that with that one cut, you can do so many things afterwards and change the design and it's so easy. Not even going to measure it. And it's with a round. I'm using a number six, which is a three eighth. And I'm just going to draw one line down. And also over the end and over the other end. The only thing I'm going to draw on here is a circle. Now the planes that I'm using, as I said, the number sixes, which is a three eighth. So I'm getting, this doesn't have three eighths, it's got 10 mil. So I'll get a 10 mil circle and I'm going to make the circle center the same. And with another marking gauge, I'll just measure how far that circle went down and transfer that onto the other end. Pop that in the vise and just mark that circle again. Well, there you go. Anyway, we should be right. And that's all the set out marks I'm going to do. So put that on there, give her a tap. So it bites in on this end. Put a screw in here to hold it. And the same, same rebate plane. And what we're going to do is 45 degrees that way and then 45 degrees that way that will form a V and that will act as a track for the round to go down. Pop it in the track and just run it down a couple of times. And the other way. What we don't want to do with this is bring the plane up. I want to keep it at an angle because I want that V to be formed. Once you've got a V that you think is wide enough, run your round down that V and it'll start to form its own trough, which is starting to here. Then what you do is when you run down, instead of keeping the plane up and down like that, roll it a little bit on both sides. And then you're widening the cove. Have a look at your profile on the end to see how you're going. Then it's a question of just keep on going. Make sure your two ends are even and work your way down. When you're getting close, like I am there, then just back the blade off a little bit. See, I'm taking much finer shavings now as opposed to these ones. That's pretty close to the mark on both ends. And that'll do me. Now what I want to do is put a fillet on this side. And the reason I don't mark those out before I do the cove is sometimes I make mistakes. I slip, I go too big, I go too small, it doesn't work out. And if I've already put a cut line in there for a fillet, well, I'm stuck with it. It either means I'm gonna to have to plane the surface off or just live with it or start again. So doing it piece by piece, and I've got a rough idea of what I want, but you'll find as you start working it and get practice at doing these things, you explore and discover as you go on what you thought was a great idea. By the time you finish, you go, oh no, this is much better, let's do it this way. So what I'll do is have a fillet, uh, about there, I reckon. So then I'll just set the marking gauge up to that line there. 
and mark it in. Put the corner into that line you've just drawn. This shoulder here we want square. So we'll take the waist off this side so the plane will sit in it like that. And there you can see we've already created a step. Now sometimes it's nice to keep going at that angle and then you can create a bead or something on the other end. And that's what I mean with having a rough idea of what I want. As I work, I think, well, that'll look nice. I'll do that and I'll change it. And having said that, that's what I'm going to do. I think I'll leave this with a bit of a ramp here now. I'm going to just take a chamfer off this end. Now, where I've got two arises here, because I'll run that bevel down there, I'm going to run this part of the plane on those two arises and it'll round it over. The profile is starting to take place. What I've just thought of now is I think I'll put a, a small fillet along here and then round the back over. Got the marking gauge set. Draw that line in. Rebate plane. And again, we'll have it so it's leaning this way. So we're cutting this part off and we've got to fill it here. I quite like these beveled angles, so I'm going to keep going with that. Bevel this before I roll this over. Putting a little bit of a bevel right on the end. And then we'll do the same with the hollow as we did before. And there you have it, a moulding made with three planes. But you won't see the real effect until we cut it and put it together in um, a mitre. So great thing about this too, rarely do you need sandpaper, but this is a great thing. Reach down, grab a handful of shavings that we created. I'll rub half of this and not the other half. And you see the difference? It burnishes itself and gives it a really nice finish and it's all natural. See that's got a bit of a sheen there. That's the end I didn't do, no sheen. What I'll do now is just cut it to a mitre, join it together and you can see the end result. Well I've glued it together and put some shellac on it and that's how it's come up. As you can see, you don't need a lot of planes. Three planes and some brains is all you need. And the versatility of just those three planes is incredible. As a matter of fact, I've got some other ones here that were done exactly the same way. Just using those three planes, a rebate and a pair of rounder hollows, number sixes. So there you go, three planes, a match set of round and hollows, and a rebate plane. These particular ones I've bought uh, new from H&T Gordon, check them out there, htgordon.com.au. Ask Terry for a catalogue and I'm sure he'll send you one, but if you're looking for another alternative, I've seen them on eBay, uh, sometimes you pick them up at garage sales or yard sales or some of the other auction sites. But if you're going to get some round and hollows, make sure you get a matched set. 
that is the round and the hollow are the same brand and they are matched because you can fall into a bit of difficulty if you get uh, one brand that's a round and another brand that's a hollow, they might not be a match set. But in the meantime, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and I will do a little video when I finish the frame for the Hannah cabinet and show you how I fit all that together and any other little hints I can think along, along the way. As a matter of fact, there is one I've thought of, but I'll share that with you when I share the making of the full frame. So remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. And I look forward to having your company at the bench very, very soon. Bye for now.